So Jeremy is the founder of the Job Insiders and author of the number one best-selling job searching chat GPT book, which is entitled Career Coach GPT. Jeremy earned his MBA in marketing from U of M, and after graduating, he went on to lead education marketing at LinkedIn. There, he helped millions of students and alums make the most of the world's most powerful career platform. Jeremy also served as a career coach at the Ross School of Business and as the marketing director for Khan Academy. Jeremy is passionate about helping Wolverines access the best opportunities around the globe, and we couldn't be more excited to have him with us here today. So I'll turn it over to you, Jeremy. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kara. And thanks to Brooke as well, who's organizing the session. What I really want everyone to know is that even though I'm going to be leading the session today, the real gurus are behind the scenes, Kiara and Brooke. So please give them a ton of love for bringing so much Wolverine uh, passion to the Alumni Association. And so what you can do is you can come to the chat, share your favorite emojis, maybe even go to ChatGPT and generate a sonnet in their honor, but let them know that you appreciate all their efforts on all of our behalfs. Now, a little bit about your presenter to build on what Kira said. I've had this super lucky career um, since coming to Michigan, but the one place that really transformed my career more than anywhere, anywhere else was getting a chance to work inside LinkedIn. I know it seems weird. It's like, hey, you worked at Google, you worked at Apple. How could LinkedIn be so excited? But if you are a career nerd like I am, always trying to peek into that black box of the hiring process. Getting a chance to work at LinkedIn is like getting a chance to work in Nirvana because you can see the inside of the beating heart of the entire hiring world if you work there. And so what I wanna share with you are all these insider secrets that I learned and have been sharing with schools around the world to help you land the job and the career that you're passionate about. But I have to warn you, as a former kindergarten teacher, this is not gonna be your standard webinar. And you know what I'm talking about. Kind of turn off your brain a little bit, do a little light multitasking. No way. I'm going to ask a lot, just like your Michigan profs back in the day. Number one, I'm going to challenge you with some pop quizzes. You probably thought you were done with pop quizzes forever, but surprise, here they come. Number two, I'm going to give you an opportunity to volunteer for live role plays. And you're going to say, Jeremy, why would I want to do that? Well, guess what? I used to give out a copy of my best-selling ChatGPT for Careers book, but I've got something way sweeter on the line today. I will personally review your LinkedIn profile and tell you everything you need to do to be found for the best opportunities in your field. But the only way you can get that is you've got to volunteer for those role plays. So that's the incentive on the line. And then third and finally, even if you don't want to volunteer, that's totally fine. Just do me a huge favor, pull up your LinkedIn profile and make some changes in real time to take advantage of all these techniques. So with that said, Here's a little pop quiz. This one goes right back to Michigan. So when I graduated from Ross about a decade ago, what percentage of my MBA classmates had quit their first job within just two years of graduation? Was it about 20%, 50%, or 80%? So let's see what everyone says here. Mackenzie says C, Peter says C, uh, Lou says B, Eric says C, Wheatley says C. I would say we're at about maybe 80% Cs with a smattering of A's and B's. And to my everlasting sort of sorrow, you are absolutely correct. And I was one of those people. Because the reality is, is even though all these Michigan alums were landing these great jobs, they weren't lasting very long. And why was that? Because the jobs they were taking, as sexy as they may have seemed on paper, weren't the jobs that actually made them happy and weren't the ones that were right for them. And we all know this. No matter when you graduated, no matter where you went in Michigan, you know there's that aspect of FOMO of like, oh, my friends are doing this. I should be doing it too. So what we're gonna focus on is how do you find the path that's right for you, whether you just graduated from Michigan this year or whether you've been out of school for 30 years. So here we go. I'm gonna start with a very cool LinkedIn power tool to expose you to all sorts of fascinating career paths. But before I get there, I wanna rewind to my start as a kindergarten teacher in New York City. Now I was teaching kindergarten in Bed-Stuy down in Brooklyn. And then after a long day of teaching, I would take the subway all the way up to the South Bronx, where I was mentoring a young man named Ivan. And Ivan was this incredible kid. He was captain of the baseball team, president of the student council. In other words, he was going places. But like an annoying old guy, I had to ask that annoying old guy question, Ivan, where are you going? He said, Jeremy, Jeremy, don't worry about it. Got it all figured out. When I grow up, I'm going to be a criminal forensic scientist. I was like, wow, how does this kid at 17 
know more about me and his career than I do at 27? Was it A, his deep love of science, B, the fact that he had researched the role exhaustively, or C, the fact that he had seen it on TV the night before? And yes, Priya, Claire, Steve, Erica, Brandon, you nailed it. At the risk of dating myself, this was the heyday of CSI. Not just regular CSI, but CSI New York, CSI Miami, CSI everywhere. And unfortunately for a kid like Ivan, that was his whole world. He didn't know a lot of product managers or machine learning engineers. He just knew what he saw on TV. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey, that's Ivan's challenge, but I'm 37 or I'm 47. I've got a way different challenge. But what I'm gonna argue to you is that we all have the same issue that Ivan faced, which is we don't know what we don't know. There are so many roles out there, millions of different roles, and we only know a fraction of what's possible. So to help you see what's really available to you, I'm gonna show you a brand new tool on LinkedIn that will expose you to everything out there that might be a really good fit. And if you wanna be the first person to win a free LinkedIn profile review, raise your hand right now in Zoom. The first hand that goes up gets the chance to go one-on-one -on -one with me for your benefit and the benefit of every Wolverine. And our first volunteer is gonna be Priya. So Priya, feel free to hit the microphone button and come and join us. I'm so excited to meet you. Everyone, please give a lot of love to Priya. Welcome, Priya. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you for volunteering. And Priya, tell us about your Michigan connection. Yes, of course. So I am a senior right now, and wow. I just graduated this May. Congratulations. Uh, Everyone, blow it up with love for Priya, the brand <laughs> newest uh, Wolverine in this entire group. I love that. Um, yeah. What did you study, Priya? Yeah, so I did a dual degree um, in LSA with economics and also at the School of Information, I studied UX design. Oh my goodness, what a cool background. I love that. Yeah. And um, in the future, I'm actually going back um, to Ross for my one-year master's program in management. Uh -huh. So I'll be at Ross for another year, but definitely want to start getting into kind of the career exploration here. Absolutely. I love that. And so Priya, when you sort of thought about applying for the MM program at Ross and taking mm -hmm. econ classes, taking UX classes... Was there a specific role you had in mind or you were just like, I love this kind of way of working, way of thinking, and now you want to see what's possible? Yeah. So it was definitely the second. Um, I went into U of M as a, a lot of people would do as a pre-med student, definitely changed my paths there after Orgo, like many others, um, <laughs> and found love with economics, but also definitely wanted the creative aspect of UX design. So chose those two options for myself. Okay, for everyone out there who ran into a brick wall in Orgo, let Priya know that she's not alone because <laughs> I suspect um, there are other Wolverines who face down that path. But Priya, we're going to find you an even better path. So check this out. <laughs> we're going to come over to this tool called Career Explorer. And the first thing you're going to notice is that this is not on LinkedIn.com, but instead on GitHub, which as folks know, is a separate Microsoft property all for developing new software. And the beauty of this tool is that even though it's still new, even still it's being tested, it can do something really powerful that I couldn't do, that Ivan couldn't do, that no one's ever been able to do in the history of job searching, which is to see all the connections between what you've done and what you can do next. So in this case, let's take Ivan as an example. Ivan was a waiter in college, or a waiter in high school, excuse me. And one of the things that Ivan knew very easily was that he didn't want to be a waiter for the rest of his life. But it turned out the skills he was building as a waiter, like time management, communication, customer service, actually linked up to the skills he would need to do another job, like operations or project management down the road. And so what we wanna do for you, Priya, is we wanna build that Venn diagram for you that takes you from Michigan out there into the world. So Priya, I know it's a little bit early. I know you still have one more year at Ross, mm -hmm. but if you could work anywhere in the world, including all across the country, all across the globe, where would you wanna be? Um, I definitely wanna say New York. New York, okay. I'm gonna yes. encourage everyone to do this exact same search with me right now but putting in your own inputs. So put in Detroit, put in Seattle, whatever you want. The link is right there in the chat. And Priya, tell me about um, maybe the, the job that you want next or even a job that you had in college, maybe as an intern or something like that. Just give me a flavor of what you've been up to. For sure. So currently, um, and in the past, I was a UX design intern. Ooh, cool. Okay, so we're going to start with user experience design. And what yeah. we're going to say is, if you were a user experience designer, where could that take you over the course of your career? And this is that classic metaphor of, 
You know, some people play their careers like they play chess, one step at a time, bump, ba, bump, ba, bump, and that's totally fine. But as a Wolverine, you might want to play it more like chess, or excuse me, like checkers before, you might want to play it more like chess. We were thinking a couple moves down the road. Where could you possibly go that could make you really happy? And this is the right road to get you there. So we're going to say of all the people who are user experience designers in New York, what do they tend to do as their next job? And Priya, I'm going to say that LinkedIn has actually designed this a little bit poorly because I think you're less interested in uh, very similar jobs because interaction designer is pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. You want jobs that are a little bit off the beaten path. Huh, design strategist, user researcher, digital designer. These could be jobs that build upon the, the skills that you built at the School of SI, but mm -hmm. actually take you in a new direction. So do this for me, Priya. As mm -hmm. I scroll down this list, tell me if there's a role that's kind of intriguing to you where you don't know a lot about it, but you'd like to learn more. I think I'm definitely design strategist. Yeah, that that's sounds super great. sexy, right? Like working at IDEO maybe or Frog, mm -hmm. trying to really understand like how do you build great experiences, not just great websites. And yeah. so the first thing I would say is, if you wanted to learn about this role, Priya, what's the best way to do it? Do you wanna just talk to ChatGPT? Do you wanna read a bunch of blogs? Or is there a better way? The first thing that kind of comes to mind is maybe reaching out to people, um, maybe from U of M who might have that role, but um, definitely just talking to others maybe within those positions. Yeah, you nailed it, Priya. And I'll paint another little Venn diagram for you. Whenever mm -hmm. it comes to learning about roles, we wanna bring two things together people who understand the role and people who want to help you. And those are Michigan design strategists. So check this out. We say find connections on LinkedIn and it automatically generates a search. So even if you say, hey, I'm just so terrible at LinkedIn. I don't know how it works. Don't worry, LinkedIn will do it for you. And then you come over here to all filters and you say, hey, show me everyone who's a design strategist who happened to go to the greatest school in the world. I'm going to show you a little hack here, Priya. So you can mm -hmm. search not just for University of Michigan, but for the individual schools that make up the University of Michigan. So for example, the Ross School of Business, where you're gonna be going um, in the fall. And this is a Boolean or search, which basically means anyone who went to University of Michigan, just the overall campus or to Ross in particular. So we click show results and surprise, surprise, there are a thousand people in that space. So tell me this Priya, Mm -hmm. Of all these people listed, Yu Chen, Sid, Shivanji, Justin, Yash, is there anyone you'd like to learn from just based on their headline or what they're up to? Um, maybe, maybe Nina. Yeah. She's oh my goodness. House. White House presidential. <laughs> How cool is that, right, Priya? Yeah. Like doing well for yourself and doing good for the world. That seems to be another really cool Venn diagram, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to learn from uh, Nina and sure enough, Nina is an amazing Wolverine. Now, you could do what so many people do, which is you hit connect and you just send, but put yourself in Nina's shoes, Priya. If you just mm -hmm. get a random message like that, would you be likely to respond? Probably not. Yeah, it's just gonna come into your inbox with no context, no explanation. So what right. I'm gonna always encourage you to do is to go one step further and add a note. Mm -hmm. Now let's work on this note together. So we're gonna write it out to Nina because I wanna be really clear about how this works. Mm -hmm. You have only 300 or even 200 characters to work with, so we're going to have to be really efficient. What is the first thing that you want Nina to know right off the bat, Priya, that binds you to her? Um, our connection to University of Michigan. Yeah, you could say, um, so great to connect with a fellow Wolverine in the UX space. And already you have two things that bring you together. So you're not a stranger. You're a Wolverine friend in the making, which is a great place to be. Now, mm -hmm. what's next, Priya? Do you want to ask Nina for a job or do you want to ask her for advice? Uh, probably at the moment I'm in right now, advice to yeah, see how absolutely. that space is, that job is. Because put yourself in Nina's shoes. Even if Nina bleeds, you know, maize and blue, even if she has season tickets to every game ever, is she going to want to just give you a job just because you went to University of Michigan? Probably not. Probably not. She wants to get to know you. She wants to build a relationship before she can go to bat for you. So you want to start with advice. You say, I'd love to learn from your experience um, and what you've discovered along the way, which is catnip for any alum out there. And I'm just going to show you something a little interesting. I know you were an econ major, not a psych major, but have mm -hmm. you ever heard of this term called generativity, Priya? 
I have not, no. So Eric Erickson, the sort of godfather of social psychology, talked about the fact that as we grow up, as we become more mature, our focus starts to go less from ourself and our own success to this idea of generativity, paying it forward to the next generation. And if there are any Wolverines on the line who are 10, 20, 30 years out of Michigan, let Priya know that this is important to you. You want to have a connection to this great part of your life, this beloved institution, and you want to help the next generation be successful. So as crazy as it sounds right now, Priya, when you're starting your career, mm -hmm. someone like Nina loves the chance to pay it forward. And so you're giving her a huge gift just by asking for advice. I know it's hard to believe, but trust <laughs> me, when you get to be an old guy or old person like me, you'll appreciate that too. Now, last question, Priya. Mm -hmm. When you have a chance to ask Nina for some time, do you want to ask for an hour tomorrow or maybe 10 minutes next week? 10 minutes next week. And why is that so important? Why is that important from a UX perspective? Um, I definitely want to make sure she knows that I respect her time and to give her kind of any heads up possible um, just so I don't like put something on her schedule that she might be busy or whatnot tomorrow. I love that. And one of the things that UX designers are always talking about is reducing friction, right? Making it easy to say yes and take an action. And you want to make it easy for Priya to say yes, even if she's reading this on her phone, running from one meeting to another. So bottom line, I'm putting this template right into the chat, not because I want you to slavishly copy it, but because I want you to use it as a little bit of a launch board to say, hey, it doesn't have to be a Shakespearean sonnet, just a couple of sentences about what we have in common, and then hopefully what I can learn from this person. Now, I have one last question for you, Priya. Sure. If you're going to have a great chat with Nina, what do you want to talk to her about? What do you want to ask her about to really discover what would be useful for you to know about her path? Yeah, I definitely um, ask how her interest came in to be for her specific role and how she found that role. Um, I think I don't associate kind of working in the White House with design at all, yeah. um, but more so of my economic background. So maybe seeing how that kind of fits into the realm and making sure I have questions prepared would be helpful. I love that. And so what I'll say is when I was at Ross back in the digital stone ages, I would come over to you know Google and do the same thing that generations of Wolverines have done. Say, hey, just give me some random questions. And these questions are good, right? Tell me about your experience. What do you like? But they're kind of generic. Watch mm -hmm. what you can do in this age of AI, Priya. I suspect you probably have played around with stuff like this. You say, <laughs> hey, I want to generate questions that are super personalized to Nina and to who I am. So we're going to grab her experience all the way back to Michigan. We're going to come over to ChatGPT and we're going to say, generate 10 questions for Nina to help me if help me understand if her path matches my passions and skills. And what are some things that are important to you, Priya? What do you care about? Um, definitely the work-life balance. Yeah, work-life balance. Teamwork. Um, I'd say uh growth in 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 the job as well yeah growth in the job yeah. absolutely and then here's a really cool thing i know this is going to be like ancient history for you but back in the day there was this show called star trek the next generation it was like eight star tracks ago <laughs> and on that show there was this character called data he was an android he was basically like the chat gpt of his time and one of the fascinating things about him was that even though he knew everything about basic knowledge like chat gpt does he didn't really understand humans and so they were always upgrading him with like an emotions chip or, you know, an empathy chip. Mm -hmm. And so we can do the same thing here with ChatGPT. We put in Nina's profile and now ChatGPT can generate something that's a little more personalized. So look what it comes up with here. It says, hey, if you want to see if there's a fit between your Venn diagram bubble and her Venn diagram bubble, it will take everything it knows about you, everything it knows about Nina, and we'll see if there is a connection that ties back to the things you care about, things like work-life balance, job growth, et cetera. And here is the prompt that I used. So if anyone wants to replicate that, when you do your own outreach, that is all available for you right there. Okay, Priya, you've been amazing. Let me ask you one last question, if you don't mind. Of course. Priya, let's say that you completely hit it off with Nina. You mm -hmm. can wanna follow in her footsteps. You wanna be you know, the next Nina 2.0. If you want to be, get that design strategist role, it's not just about wanting, it's also about skills. And so one of the cool things is that LinkedIn will say, hey, you want to up-level a little bit in design strategy, design research, ethnography, maybe even extending beyond what you learned at the School of Information. How could you develop those skills, Priya, 
without going back and getting a whole nother master's degree from Michigan? As fun as that would be. Um, maybe asking her if there are any resources online. Yeah, absolutely. So get advice straight from the insider. Like, how did you guys, how did you learn this stuff? Or if you come into this tool, this uh, LinkedIn um, Career Explorer, you can say, hey, I want to learn about design research. And so what it'll do is it'll take you into LinkedIn Learning and you'll say, oh, this is so cool. Two hour course, a three hour course. It's not so overwhelming. But then you start to take the course and you realize it's going to be 30 bucks or 100 bucks. Tell me this, Priya. As a brand new Michigan, Michigan grad who's also going into a whole nother Michigan program, do you have a lot of spare cash to spend? Uh, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. So save your money. I've got a great hack for you. It mm -hmm. turns out that if you go to any public library in the world, Detroit Public Library, Ann Arbor Public Library, wherever, they all have free access to LinkedIn Learning. So get uh -huh. your library card. Get hooked up with that free access, and you can take every course to your heart's content without spending a cent. How does that sound, Priya? Amazing. <laughs> okay. I mean, Priya, you have been amazing. I want to make you two promises. Number one, I want to review your profile. So okay. Please, please, please come to my profile on LinkedIn. Just shoot me a little connection request, and I will yeah. hook you up. And then number two, I want to make you a promise on behalf of this group. If there mm -hmm. is anything you need to support your success now or in the future, Please don't hesitate to come to the Wolverine Nation. We are here to support your success. And welcome to the best club in the world, Priya, the leaders and best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congrats again. Okay, everyone, blow it up with love for Priya. And then keep the love flowing by asking your biggest questions, your most burning questions, right in the Q&A. Now, obviously, you can put it in the chat if you want. But the Q&A is a little bit easier because we can keep those organized. And I just want to start with a question that goes like this. I've recently been laid off and have been busy applying to open positions. Some applications ask if I would like to opt out of AI during the recruiting process. Am I hurting myself by opting out? So this is a great question. I'm so sorry to hear about that situation. But one of the things that you should know is that even though AI feels so new all of a sudden, recruiters have been using AI on their side for over 20 years. As an example, when I started my career, in addition to being a kindergarten teacher, I was also a recruiter at Teach for America. And one of the things that I used is a very rudimentary AI in our applicant tracking system that allowed us to quickly scan every resume and see who matched the job description. And so what I would advise to this person is don't opt out of that because they might just put you in a separate bucket where you never get reviewed, but instead learn how to play the AI game. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in about 20 minutes. So hang on to that question. Okay. I don't see any other questions for now. So at this point, I wanna go over to the next question for you. Let's go to the recruiter's plight here. And we talked a lot about ourselves as job seekers. Jeremy, I'm oh, so yeah. sorry to interrupt yeah. you. We no did have two more questions pop ah, in yes. right as you were saying there weren't any other questions. Yes, yes, absolutely. Great questions. Okay, so Danielle, what if your career slash position isn't listed in LinkedIn Career Explorer? So you hit on an important thing, Daniela, which is because this tool is in beta, it doesn't cover every possible job titles, just the ones where there's overwhelming data. So LinkedIn's data scientists who built this tool tend to be very conservative. If they only have five or 10 data points to work with, they don't want to make projections based on that. However, what I would recommend for you, Daniela, is find the nearest, closest role. So let's imagine you had a role that was kind of like technical project manager in charge of software as a service solutions. Maybe we don't have that exact job title. But if you just look for project manager, what you're going to find is very similar skills, very similar experiences that again, gives you a taste of what's possible. So even if the perfect role isn't there, do check it out with a similar role. And if you wanna find someone who's a perfect match, absolutely come into LinkedIn and search for that exact role. And because LinkedIn now has over a billion profiles, chances are there are gonna be a lot of people who do match right on LinkedIn. Okay, um, John says, how should we decide on a specialty in data? Um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to actually give John the ability to chat. Hold on one sec, John. just wanted to get a chance to dive a little deeper there. John, I just gave you the microphone. If you don't mind clicking on that button, I would love to hear more about your question. This is for John Caspers. Feel free to unmute and tell us more about deciding on a specialty in data. Hi, hey, uh, yeah. I, I studied statistics in undergrad and then got my master's in applied data science, both from U of M. Yeah. So I have this 
skill set in data and I'm wondering how to apply myself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the industry or to a specific company or role? Yeah, great question. And so what we're going to talk about in that section that I was sort of um, hyping up a little bit a moment ago is exactly how to make the case that you belong once you know the exact role. So in your case, John, if you say, I want to be a data scientist, a data analyst, a machine learning engineer, whatever the particular role is, I'm going to show you how to absolutely ace the AI test so that you rise to the top of recruiter search results. How does that sound, John? Sounds good. Okay, more to come real soon. Thanks, John. Okay, let me take one last question, but I'm gonna have to put a pause on questions just in the interest of time because um, I've been told by your amazing host, Brooke and Kiera, Jeremy, do not do that very typical Wolverine thing and go on and on and on. I'm gonna try to run a fairly tight ship. So one last question. Um, Catherine says, can you address age? Recruiters are less excited about more mature Wolverine ladies with excellent experience. I love that, Catherine. Um, the phrase, more mature Wolverine ladies. I feel like that should be the name of a club. You should have that on a t-shirt. But in any case, that being said, I totally get it. You know, ageism, even in 2024, is alive and well. I've certainly seen that firsthand here in Silicon Valley. That being said, what I'm going to tell you about when we talk about LinkedIn profiles is that the beauty of your profile is it's your story to tell. And so here are two things that I think can help to fight against a little bit of that bias. The most obvious one is just don't list any dates on your education. You don't have to go back and say, hey, I graduated from Michigan in 1987 because you don't want to fall into that trap that recruiters have laid. And then number two, the other thing is, is at the end of the day, put yourself in a recruiter's shoes. And this is kind of where we're headed with this question. What recruiters want to know is what you can do for them. Can you actually do this job really well? Or are you just wasting my time with a million entries on your resume that aren't relevant? And so what I would do, uh, Catherine, is I would go back and I would carefully curate your experience, removing all the old jobs, all the stuff that's irrelevant, and just having a really tight focus on the handful of things you've done recently that are spot on for your next job. And I think if you do those two things together, now you're presenting someone who's fresh and relevant and ready to hit the ground running, and you can actually fight against that sort of gravitational pull of bias that unfortunately still exists in our society. Great question. And I would love to see that t-shirt, by the way, if you decide to make it. Okay, here's our next question for you. Let's go back to that recruiter. You are a recruiter at Google, or you are a recruiter at the White House, or you are a recruiter at Teach for America. You are looking for top talent in a sea of 1 billion profiles. What are you searching for? A, a specific degree. Show me someone with an MBA or a BS or whatever. Show me someone from Michigan or Michigan State or Ohio State. And by the way, I realize I'm wearing Buckeye Red today, so my apologies. I need to get a little better at coordinating those outfits. Or is it C, job title? It's all about, hey, are you able to do this specific job? And I know I kind of gave this one away, but Kevin, Iman, Sarita, Brandon, you're all correct. It is all about job title. And to prove it to you, I am now going to take you inside the most important screen in the entire hiring process that almost no job seeker gets to see. Because even though it is LinkedIn, it's not the free LinkedIn that we can use all the time, but instead it's LinkedIn Recruiter. This is a $10,000 per year per seat tool that every recruiter in the world basically has no choice but to buy. Because let's face it, even though LinkedIn will never admit this on Capitol Hill, they are the M word. Yes, a monopoly. They have all the data on every professional, which makes them a gold mine for every recruiter, and which is why they pay those high prices. But even with all this data, all these fancy tools, what do recruiters do? They come in and just say, hey, show me the project manager, show me the producers, show me the person who can do this job tomorrow. And so what does that mean? I want you to look at your LinkedIn profile right now. Look at it in all its glory, pull it right up side by side with my uh, presentation. If it says something like Michigan grad, or this is the job that I'm doing today, or the job I was doing yesterday, but it's not saying what you wanna to do tomorrow, guess what? Recruiters, even with all their power, can't see inside the most important thing of all, which is your brain. All they can see is what you give them. And so what I want you to do is I want to help you find that perfect role so you can broadcast a super clear signal in your most important place. So if you are ready to get that next profile review, I'm just going to lower all hands right now. Put your hands up right now. And whosoever hand goes up first gets that next opportunity. And that's going to be Cyrita. So Cyrita, you have the floor. Go ahead and grab that virtual microphone and let's do this 
for the benefit of Wolverine Nation. Hello, Sarita. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Good, good. Tell us about your Michigan connection. Well, um, I got a bachelor's of science degree in nuclear engineering. Whoa, super University cool. University of Michigan. Um, then I proceeded to get a master's of science and administration in um, organizational leadership. Wow. And I just completed from another school. Okay. And I just completed from another school my doctorate of education in organizational leadership. Oh, my goodness. You are a rock star. That's what I try to be. <laughs> That's right. And so where does that leave you in terms of thinking about the future? Like, are there certain job titles, certain roles that are you're drawn to, or are you just completely open? No. Well, this particular role, I wanted to get my doctorate degree. I literally wanted to help people. So I'm looking to work for a pro a nonprofit or not for profit yeah. to help them in um in leadership, in their roles, helping the community, helping the public, helping people. Oh, I love that. Okay. And so this is the sort of the perfect sort of uh, stage to, to um, ch uh, chat right now, Sarita, because here's what's going to happen. If you are like a job seeker that has existed before the age of AI, you've got to instantly narrow down your interests to specific roles that you know of. And you say, okay, I'm going to go for, you know, executive director or nonprofit leader or whatever. But again, as I was mentioning in my Ivan example, there are so many other roles out there and it's hard to know what's possible. Not even career coaches, not even Brooke or Kier or myself can know about every role. But Sarita, who do you think is informed about every job title under the sun? AI. AI. So here we go. And Google. <laughs> yes. And notice what I'm not going to do. I'm not coming to ChatGPT to write my resume or write a cover letter. That leads to hallucinations. That leads to bad writing. That's a recipe for disaster. However, I am using it for what ChatGPT is actually good for, which is brainstorming, using it as my career muse to expand my horizons. So watch this, Rita. I'm going to start with a little sort of biographical sketch. I'm going to say, I'm a Michigan grad with a background in nuclear engineering. Um, I'll say um, organizational leadership and um, a passion for um, nonprofit leadership in particular. Now tell me this, Sarita, what else makes you you? What are some of the things that are your superpowers that you love to do and that you're great at? Um, I'm great with explaining things to people um, and helping people, just helping people in general. Like I can always help somebody else get a job and help somebody else with their resume, but not, not so much with me. Yeah. Um, okay. And then is there anything that you're just excited about, like um, career wise? So you mentioned that passion for nonprofit leadership. Anything else that ChatGPT should know about in terms of not just your head, but also your heart? Like what's drawing you to a profession, almost at a calling level? I want to help actually people like me, you know, okay. but do. I mean, I want to help um, those in the uh, minority. Um, who were basically told that they can't do anything, they can't be anybody, but they can succeed. Yeah, I love that. At the highest levels of life. Beautiful. And so once we have this little sort of background, and by the way, you're getting lots of love here, Sarita. You've got this whole rooting section of almost 200 Wolverines. Um, so you're doing awesome. I'm going to say, what are 10 specific job titles that closely match my passions and skills. And this is where ChatGPT is so good because we're not asking ChatGPT to do everything for us or to tell us what to do with our lives. We're just asking ChatGPT to boil that ocean of opportunity down to something a little more manageable. And so now it's gonna start to spit out stuff that are literally being hired for every single day. Remember what we talked about, Sarita? Here's the recruiter screen. Every day someone is saying, I need an executive director. I need a chief diversity officer, whatever it is. That's what you want to decide to focus on. And so I want you to look at this list with me, Sarita. I know there's a lot of sexy stuff here from CDO to DI, community engagement, social impact strategists, program management. Of all of these roles, are there any that are especially exciting to you? I know it's a little small on my screen, so I'm going to put it right into the chat. Take a gander at those and just let me know what feels like a good fit for who you are and what you love doing. Okay, Serena?
Okay. Um, I'm looking at um, social impact strategies yeah. and public policy advocate. Oh, I love that. Okay. So you've got these two roles that are really intriguing to you. So we're going to say, tell me more, make it a little bigger. Tell me more about, I believe it was number six. Um, and then also number nine. Um, number nine. Okay. Tell me more about number six and nine. And now here's what I want you to get really selfish, Sharita. I know you want to do good for the world. I know you want to help others, but the place that you have to do, start, start with is by being good to yourself, giving yourself what you're passionate about. So what's important to you, Sarita? Is it the ability to make a good living? Is it the ability to grow professionally? Is it the ability to travel? What really lights you up? Well, see, that's the thing. I specifically went to get my doctorate to help other people. Yeah. Like the yeah. first job, the nuclear job was for the money. Yes. And the master's degree was to increase that money. Yeah. And this degree is literally to help other people. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say... Create a table that rates these roles based on the ability to help other people and the fit with my skills and background. Um, use a scale of one to five. I think ChatGPT tends to be a little more effective the more we give it specific numeric uh, quantitative ways of rating things. And so check this out, Sarita. You now have your own little cheat sheet where this is gonna walk you through these different roles, you know, what they do, what they focus on, as well as what is really hard for any human to do, how do they fit with you? Is there that Venn diagram match between what they're up to and what you actually wanna be working on? Does that feel like a good first step? Yes, definitely. Okay, so check this out. And here's your table, by the way. You have a nice little way to sort of look at how they stack up side by side. And mine raises a really interesting point which is what about salaries? What about understanding conditions on the ground? So Sarita, where are you based right now? I live in St. Joseph, Michigan, Southwest Michigan. Okay, beautiful. So watch this. As of two weeks ago, if you were to ask ChatGPT, what is the salary range for these roles in Southwest Michigan? What do you think ChatGPT would have said, Sarita? Oh, zero. <laughs> zero. Okay, man. There's no yeah. role. They don't do that over here. Okay, got it, got it. Um, but I think they would also say zero in the sense that ChatGPT, as many people experienced, would say, hey, my data only goes to 2022. I don't know what's happening. However, as people may have seen just last week, OpenAI rolled out this new thing called GPT-40, which everyone can use for free and which now searches the web to get live data. So you say, what is the salary range for these roles in Southwest Michigan in 2024, or you said Southeast Michigan. Is that right, Sarita? Southwest. Oh, Southwest, okay, beautiful. What is the salary range for these roles in Southwest Michigan? And check this out. Without paying a cent to OpenAI, ChatGPT is going on the web. It's running this search. Who's running the Python? Great. It's running Python, yes. You recognize her, Sarita. Yes, I um started taking Python while I was working on my doctorate, but I had to stop because I could only do one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I'm gonna say, go back to Python. So you might have had to use Gemini for that, you know, a couple of years ago or a couple of weeks ago, excuse me. Or you might have had to use perplexity to get the sources. We say generate the sources uh, for those data points. And what it will now be able to do for you, again, without paying any money, is it will show you exactly where it's coming from. So it's going to show yeah. you the Glassdoor links, the Indeed links, all that good stuff. Okay. So bottom line, please, please, please use that prompt to find not just the role that makes your heart happy, but also the role that makes your wallet happy. Does that make sense, Sarita? Yes, it does. Okay, awesome. And then one last little bonus hack. So back in the day when I worked at LinkedIn, I worked on the education team and our entire goal was to help you, Sarita, you and Wolverines around the world who want to learn from fellow Wolverines. So check this out. You can definitely just do a search on LinkedIn, but if you want to feel like you're part of the, the leaders in best uh, community, the best thing you can do is come to the University of Michigan page and what you will see here under the school page is that you have access to hundreds of thousands of Wolverines in every pursuit, every path on life, almost 350,000 total. And as a result, you can filter this list for the exact right people. So Sarita, what if we said, show us people who are in the public policy space. So we come over here, we put it in public policy, we find the perfect folks and sure enough, they're working in Washington, but they're also working in Michigan. And that's where you want to be. 
So we're going to find people who are in public policy in Michigan, and we're going to scroll on down and say, hey, here's Michael, who's a public policy professional. He's over in Allen Park. Can we learn from him about what it's like to be in this path? And we can apply all those same techniques that we talked about in our last demo, but this time with that laser-like focus of the role you're excited about. How does that sound, Sarita? Wonderful. I want to show you one extra bonus hack because you've been so amazing, which is, hey, when you reach out to these folks, what if you want to make a really tight connection? Not just based on what they're doing today or where they live. Maybe you want to say, hey, show me what they studied when they were back in Michigan. And you can slide all the way over to the right. And no one knows about this, by the way. And you can say, show me everyone who studied nuclear engineering or stud who studied um, history. And this is a really great way to see what's possible. Even if you're like, oh, my major only takes me into one field, nothing could be further from the truth. Okay, Sarita? Yeah, because as a nuclear engineer, trust me that no other engineering firm wanted to touch you. Okay, they got it, got it. <laughs> well, I'm and curious so now. Let's just do a little search. Let's mm -hmm. come back here to a clean, a clean slate and let's see where all the nuclear engineering majors ended up. So we're gonna come over here to what they studied. We're gonna plug in nuclear engineering and we're gonna see sure enough, there are over a thousand Michigan alums. And yeah, a lot of them are working at Los Alamos and Sandia, but some of them are working at other interesting places. So if you wanna work at a startup, if you wanna go into finance, if you wanna get into the energy sector, lots of people doing lots of stuff off the beaten path and they're all Wolverine, Sarita. So they're there yeah. to help you And they succeed. didn't have that when I graduated. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So it's all available now for every single Wolverine. And Sarita, I can't wait to see you succeed. Please, please, please send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll hook you up with that profile review. Okay. Thank you. Sarita, you were fantastic. Go blue. Go blue. That's right. my original one that I go, I still go blue. Hey, there we go. There we go. Um, so I'm going to answer maybe one or two more questions. And then we're going to truck on to that last part about profiles, because I know that's what everyone's hungry for. How do I beat the AI? OK, Steve says, I recently graduated. and I do not have much experience in my degree field. How would you suggest that I get that experience? So the first thing I'm going to suggest, Steve, is a little counterintuitive. I don't want you rushing out and doing all these jobs or getting more master's degrees until you know that you need them. What I would do, first of all, Steve, is I would find the Michigan alumni in that field. I would share with them what you've done share your LinkedIn profile, share your resume and say, hey, given that you're a hiring manager for the roles I want, what do you think I need? And I guarantee you in a lot of those conversations, Steve, they're gonna say, hey, you don't need anything else. You just need to present your information in a different way. Make it more obvious to me what you did at Michigan and why you're a fit. And I've seen so many people waste years of their life and tens of thousands of dollars trying to fill in these alleged gaps, but they've never talked to the experts on the other side of the screen. So before you spend a cent or a minute, talk to Michigan experts and they will hook you up with what you need. Great question, Steve. Okay, here we go. Marge says, over the past 20 years or so, I've been developing loads of skills along my career path. My question is, are there any hacks or tools on LinkedIn that can show me which skills or maybe keywords are most in demand? That way I can customize my profile to be more in line with what's needed right now. And Marge, you nailed it. That's exactly where we're headed. Time for our final section. So let's talk about the last pop quiz. And that is, if you were a recruiter, how would you tell if a candidate was a good fit on LinkedIn, given that you have 1 billion candidates to search through? Is it A, the classes they took back in Ann Arbor? B, the keywords they listed on their profile? Or C, the GPA they worked so hard to earn, burning the midnight oil? And I know A and C are important, but Wheatley, Elaine, Derek, Marge, and every Wolverine has nailed it. It's all about keywords. And to prove it to you, I'm going to take you right into the belly of the beast and show you an actual LinkedIn recruiter search. So here I am. I'm a recruiter based in Chicago. I'm searching for a project manager who has certain skills that are really important to us. And check out the first thing that pops up. These people are rising to the top of my search results, not because they've done the job or they even have the right skills, but because they have the most important keyword, always the desired job title, in their most important section the headline, that little piece of text right below your name. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait a second, Jeremy. Are you telling me that that tiny little piece of text matters more than my experience or my skills? And that is exactly what I'm telling you. Because here's the dirty little secret straight from LinkedIn, which is LinkedIn's engineers have a tough problem. They have 1 billion profiles to prioritize 
and lots of people match the words. So the one way that they can uh, consistently break those ties is they give extra weight to the scarcest section. The uh, headline has only 220 characters, which means that it gets more weight, more value, and more importance in the search algorithm. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to make your profile absolutely stand out by getting your most important keywords in your most important sections. And if you want that opportunity, I'm gonna lower all hands right now, first hand to go up, gets that opportunity. And it looks like it is gonna be Scott Tatro. So Scott, you've got this opportunity. I'm gonna give you the ability to talk. And Scott, welcome to the session. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. All right, Scott, when, when was your uh, Michigan, uh, Michigan heyday? Uh, so I uh, uh, did an executive MBA a few years cool. ago. <laughs> oh, congratulations, that's awesome. And then in terms of what you're focused on today, what would you love to be doing next? Yeah, I'd love to be working for a private equity backed portfolio company. Beautiful. As so I've put, done in the past, or uh, work yeah. with a uh, owner um, who's looking to sell their company and get it ready for private equity um, purchase. Super cool. So you've got this really clear focus. I love that North Star. Now put yourself in the shoes of a headhunter. Here I am. I've got a tremendous financial incentive to find the Scots of the world. What am I putting in this job title box if I want to find that person, Scott? Yeah, so uh, either Chief Operating Officer or Vice President of Operations. Okay, beautiful. So we'll start with COO, and we'll put a specific focus on private equity. So check this out, Scott. I want you and every Wolverine not to come to your profile, but to pause one moment to come to the search box and to play the role of the headhunter. So everyone, come to LinkedIn right now, type in the thing that you want to be found for. So Chief Operating Officer, in Scott's case, and then also private equity, because we know that's also a critical part of his search. Now, if I'm a recruiter, I wanna find someone who absolutely nails those things, who's a total slam dunk. And tell me this, Scott, what do Yale and William and Sean and Anna all have in common? Why are their they at the top of my list? Their titles. Not even their titles, and I wanna be really clear about this. Does LinkedIn actually know what they're doing in the real world, Scott? No. No, LinkedIn's just an algorithm in a box here in Mountain View, California. All it has to go on is what it gives them, and it prioritizes one section even more importantly than the title. What is that section? It is, um, da, 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 their yeah, I was headline. Gonna say the, the, the title, yeah, their headline there. Yeah, the, the and I want to be clear, because I think when we say title, we're usually talking about what is your job title? What has your company told you to do? However, the difference between your title and your headline is that your title can't be changed. You are what your company tells you you are, but your headline can be anything you want. And this is how we break through the catch-22, Scott, of that imposter syndrome of, hey, I went to Michigan, I know what I wanna do, but I'm not that thing yet, how can I get found for it? So Scott, do you mind if I pull up your profile, not to criticize it, but to shower it with some maize and blue love? Absolutely. Okay, good man, good man. Everyone, you gotta give Scott so much love in the chat. It's one thing to raise your hand, but to share your profile with your entire Michigan community, that takes true guts. And you can see it, it's raining hearts. It's raining uh, emoji, Scott. So lots of love. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna pull up Scott's profile. And then once we've got that profile, um, we're gonna use this to get really nope, specific. Di oh, different, it's Scott different Scott. PMP. Okay, beautiful, PMP, there we go. Dun, da, da, da. All right, we gotcha. So now we've got your profile. What we wanna do is we wanna start with that critical first section. Why will you not be found for these roles today, Scott? What is the number one missing thing that will put you at the bottom of this list? Yeah, so I guess the biggest thing is just to actually put in the correct uh, title, Chief Operating Officer or Vice President of Operations. Exactly, and just to be really clear, all you, do you already have that title or do you wanna move into that title in the future? I wanna move into that title. So that's uh, part of the opportunity is to position myself. Right, so now. If you were just to say chief operations officer, that might trigger that imposter syndrome, right? It says, hey, I know I want that thing, but I can't claim to be it today. That's not correct. So what is one single word, Scott, that you could put right here that would be absolutely ethical and true about your intentions? Aspiring. Aspiring, yes. Aspiring chief operations officer, uh, seeking chief operations officer roles, um, exploring chief operations officer opportunities. Any of those variations is exactly equivalent in the mind of the algorithm because it's a heat-seeking missile. All it cares about is the most important keyword in the most important section. So what I want every Wolverine to do 
is please update your headline right now to signal where you're headed. Now, there's only one catch. Scott, are you currently employed? Uh, no. Okay, so you're a free agent. You're in good shape. Yep. You can absolutely lead with that. And that's going to be catnip for recruiters because they know they've come to the right place. But for all the Wolverines out there who are like, hey, I currently have a job, but I know I don't want to be doing that job three months from now. Any idea, Scott, how they could send the signal to recruiters without getting fired from their current role? Uh, you can actually say that you're seeking without having the green circle around there open to, to network. So Yes, you nailed it. So check this out, everyone. I know there's a lot of controversy in the crazy world of LinkedIn about that green circle that says open to work. And people will say, oh, I don't want to signal that. That's totally okay. But check this out. If you come to the open to work section, and I want everyone doing this right now, take this action this very moment. I want you to come in here, put in all the jobs you want, COO, VP of operations, on-site, remote, whatever. And then I want you to go into stealth mode. The signal will be sent to all the users of the super expensive platform, but not to your current boss and not even to the recruiters at your current company. So all the right people know you're interested, none of the wrong people. How does that sound, Scott? That sounds great. And that's what I actually have turned on. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. So that's a great way to get that word out there if you can't change your headline. Okay, that's step number one. But Scott, let's face the plight of these four recruiters. How many people are they looking through for this role? A lot. <laughs> a lot. And recruiters hate that. You know, they want to get down to like five or 10 people to interview, not 15,000. So imagine you're a recruiter, Scott. If you're facing this screen, what are you going to filter for beyond just job title to find the perfect people? Keywords. Keywords and specifically skills. Yeah. And so if you had to guess, what do you think are the three most important skills that a headhunter desires in an amazing COO? Yeah. So profit and loss responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, operations management. Beautiful. And uh, or I guess, uh, um, uh, leadership development. Okay, sounds really good to me. Now, that being said, I don't know the exact answer, but I know one way we can figure it out. It turns out, Scott, that every single day, there is a place on LinkedIn where recruiters are handing you a list of the most important skills. What is that place? And if anyone knows, uh, put it in the chat. What is the source of truth for any job? Yeah, I guess the source of truth would just be looking at job descriptions for sure. Exactly. Yeah, and Anna got it and Jennifer got it. Yeah. I know it sounds so humdrum, but the reality is inside the job description is the stuff that matters. And if you look through these job descriptions and you say, hey, we need someone who has experience with M&A, we need some experience with this and that and the other thing. Well, guess what? That's the stuff that you want to ace. So let me find a really good job description that we can use here. Chief Operating Officer. Let me find one that has a ton of really juicy keywords. Yeah, here we go. Uh, marketing efforts, sales strategy, operational infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to grab this job description. And we're going to say, hey, this is so painful. If we try to figure this out on our own, we're going to be doing this forever. Who do you think can help us in our moment of crisis, Scott? Well, uh, using LinkedIn, and then also you can use ChatGPT, or you can use JobScan or other types of things to put in and identify keywords from the job. Yeah, you, you nailed it. Scott, two years ago, I was all about JobScan. I said, hey, come to the site called JobScan, and you can scan your resume and see what you do. Only problem is it costs 50 bucks. The beauty is, is that ChatGPT can do the exact same thing faster for free all of a sudden. Again, I don't want Michigan folks to be spending money on all these fancy career tools when you could be donating to the Alumni Association. So instead of that, I want you coming over here and saying, what are the top 15 most important skill keywords in this JD? And again, ChatGPT is not so great at writing, but it's awesome at pattern matching. And so what it's able to do, again, the prompt is in the chat, is it immediately breaks it down and says, hey, here's your cheat sheet, Scott. Here are the 15 things you need to be found for on your LinkedIn profile or even on your resume. Now, Scott, any guesses? What is the next step if you want to figure out um, what the most important ones to work on are for you, what you're missing essentially? Yeah, so I, I guess I would, you know, again, compare the job description with um, my own profile and see where I'm missing keywords. Yes, okay, which of these keywords are missing from my profile? Again, you could have used JobScan, you could have paid your 50 bucks, or you can do it on ChatGPT for free. So we're going to grab Scott's profile. And by the way, Scott, you've been amazing. This is so much more fun to do this with an actual profile 
This is just a hypothetical one. So I got to give you big props. And then we're going to say, here is my profile. And of course, you can do the same thing with your CV. And check this out. Again, it's going to go to town. It's going to say, hey, all right, well, the message you submitted was too long. But it's going to give you a list of the things that you're uh, missing. And I'm going to ask you a question, Scott. What if it says that you are missing something like, let me just grab a quick example here. What if it says that you are missing project management as a key skill? How could you incorporate that into your profile? Where would that belong? Um, right now, I would have it down in, in terms of my your skill sets. So you could yeah. add that in terms of skills, but also in terms of education. Yeah, absolutely. And so let's talk about this through the lens of the algorithm. Again, Scott, these poor engineers at LinkedIn have this tough job. They've got to break all these ties because a lot of people have the skill listed. If uh, Scott has the skill listed once and Kiera has the skill listed 10 times, who wins that jump ball? <laughs> the person who has the most uh, keywords. So I would also add them into my about section or uh, actually into my experience in each of the roles I would play as well. That's exactly right. So it's not just binary matching. Do you have the keyword? That's too easy. It's actually keyword density that matters because the more times you list it, the more diverse places you list it, the more likely you know what you're talking about. And so skills is definitely one. I'm going to give you the holy trinity really quick. The three places that matter most. Now, here's a quick tip, Scott. Just two months ago, LinkedIn lifted their cap from 50 skills to 100 skills. So you can list 50 more skills on LinkedIn without really breaking a sweat. That's step one. Now, step two is, if you want to add it into your experience section, the easiest thing to do is what? What have you done already that's so powerful? I just had those keywords underneath my uh, experience and, and uh, sections. And, and that's true. Them. You can just list the skills or even easier than that, just paste in your resume bullets, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe, Scott, the number of amazing Wolverines who have the world's greatest resumes and have blank LinkedIn profiles. So for whatever reason, there's this myth out there that people should have a different LinkedIn than they have a resume. Nothing could be further from the truth. If you have a great keyword on your resume, put it on LinkedIn where recruiters can actually see it. That's step two. Any guesses what the third leg of that stool is, Scott? Where else matters? Last question. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, oh, I put it in my about section. About section, yeah. So here's the thing. This section, your headline is limited to 220 characters. It's tough to squeeze stuff in there. Your about section is 10 times longer, 2,000 characters. And I love what you've done here. You've listed out all those skills, made it super easy. And I will just say for anyone who wants a really quick template, feel free to steal mine. Basically, I said, I want my template to speak both to the algorithm and the recruiter. So what have I done? I made sure that the very beginning part that they can see says, hey, here's what I do. Here's why you can trust me. And then for the algorithm, here are the exact keywords you're looking for. And Scott, if you nail your skills, your experiences in your about section, you are golden. And Scott, I got to give you a lot of love. And then I'm going to send you a message. Let's do a profile review because I'd love to dive even deeper when we have more time. How does that sound? Sounds awesome. Thank you okay. so much, Jeremy. You got it, Scott. You're awesome. Congrats again. And I can't wait to chat soon, okay? Sounds great. Okay, lots of love for Scott. Okay, no folks that are run. My apologies. I'm going to close up with a couple of final goodies. So if you can stay in the line for just like two minutes, I promise to shower you with lots of good stuff. First thing is, I would love to connect with every Wolverine. You can use uh, LinkedIn to connect with me, send me a note. I'm always sharing out new hacks, new techniques all the time. And I'm happy to help you if there's anything I can do to support your success. So connect with me and you've got me in your corner forever. Number two, I would love, love, love for you to give that feedback to Brooke and Kiera because as a former teacher, feedback is my most important source of getting better and getting sharper at this. So I love your feedback right there in Qualtrics. I will also mention if you did not win a free profile review, you're not, I can actually hook you up with a free profile review right through my website. So what you're going to do is you want to come over here and get my free AI bots, my free profile review, everything else. And then as a huge shout out to the alumni team, I want you to go ahead and come over here and get free access to my LinkedIn masterclass, which is only available for alumni association members. So highly recommend grabbing that. Okay. I know we're down to maybe our final two minutes of overtime. So let me go back to Kier and Brooke. Is there one or two more questions, Kier and Brooke, that you want me to speak to? And um, yeah. I'll grab one quick question that came sure. into the Q&A. Um, quick to ask and maybe quick to answer. How important is the recommendation section of your LinkedIn profile? 
Oh, such a good question. This is the perfect one to end on because it speaks to the human as well as the algorithm. So you might say to yourself, hey, it's all about those endorsements on LinkedIn. You know, if you scroll down to your bottom of your profile, you'll see all these things. I was endorsed for this and endorsed for that. However, there's a little problem. My own mother has endorsed me for everything from astronomy to zoology, two things I know nothing about. And the same mom problem has plagued LinkedIn ever since because they can't always tell which endorsements count. As a result, recruiters don't trust them because there's not enough there there. Is this substantial or is this just a hallucination? On the other hand, recommendations, where you can see who the person is, what their relationship was, a full recommendation, that is like gold to a recruiter. Again, they are up against this incredibly tough challenge of choosing a needle out of a giant haystack. And what is the best source of truth? Not what you say about yourself, but what others say about you. So recruiters do not filter for endorsements. It's not even built into the tool. But if I was to click on Emily's profile, right at the top of her profile, not the bottom, the recruiter's gonna see her recommendations. That's how critical they are. So you don't have to get a million of them, but one or two high quality recommendations can make all the difference. Amazing question. And back to you, Kira. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Jeremy showed a ton of love during this session. So please join me in showing our love back to Jeremy. Um, you're welcome to use your reactions or do it in the chat, uh, whatever works out best for you. Um, I feel like I have learned a ton. It was hard to actually focus on what I was supposed to be doing on the back end because I was so busy learning. So thank you so much, Jeremy. Um, as Jeremy mentioned, you have access to Jeremy's LinkedIn Masterclass if you are an Alumni Association member for free. Um, so you can check that out in our on our website. Um, but then also if you want to become a member so that you can gain access to that and other things that we offer uh, specifically for our members, um, you're welcome to check out our website for that as well. So thank you, Jeremy, for your time, for your expertise, and for giving back to the University of Michigan community. And just so you all know, Jeremy is constantly giving back all year round, not just when we do webinars, and we really appreciate it. As a reminder to everyone, a recording of today's session will be sent as a follow-up via email. A link to our survey has already been placed in the chat. Please let us know what you thought about today's session, if you have any recommendations for future sessions as well. And don't forget to explore our website at alumni.umich.edu slash career. There you'll find a wealth of resources um, that are available to you on demand. I'm also going to put really quickly in the chat um, a question opportunity that was placed in the chat by um, a fellow U of M alum, you're welcome to reach out to Stacy um, if you'd like to. All right, so we did everything we need to do today. Thank you for the extra time, Jeremy, and to everyone who's still here. Go Blue, we'll see you next time. Go Blue, y'all.